Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. So in this video, we will see how we can use constraint layout in Jetpack Compose. Constraint layout is frequently used in the view-based approach where it helps in reducing the view hierarchy so that there is no nesting of the layouts. So in Jetpack Compose, this can easily overcome with the help of rows and column. Whenever we need to update a UI, we assign a state and whenever state got changed, the UI got refreshed. But in case of view-based approach, we need to find a view inside a view hierarchy and whenever the hierarchy is more nested then it will take more time to find the elements and update the ui constraint layout basically contains some other benefits like uh, we can use guidelines barrier and chain so in this video we will learn in detail how we can use constraint layout how we can use guideline how we can use barrier and how we can use chain so now we will just switch to the project and go to main java and from here we will open UI, go to screen. So here we will create one more file and it will be constraint demo. Now we will create one composable function here. Now we will create a preview block for it. So in this particular function, we will use constraint layout. So to use a constraint layout, we need to add a dependency. We have already added that dependency in the build.gradle. So you can see here constraint layout compose. So you need to add this dependency to use the constraint layout. In the view based approach, if you have used constraint layout, so you notice we align a view based on the reference ID, but in compose, there is no concept of ID. So here we get a function called create reference. So create reference will create an ID to for corresponding component. Let's say we need to create a UI where we are keeping four elements in the screen. Okay, now I will create a four reference IDs. So I will say well text one reference, then text two reference, then text three reference, and text four reference is equal to create reference. So here we created four reference. We will use to particular UI element. Okay. Now here you will see a text. Let's say we give it first view. Now to use this reference, we need to use modifier. Modifier dot constraint s. So we need to use constraint s. Okay. So for this particular text, we are using a text one reference. So now here we need to provide body. So basically here we will tell this particular text component will be displayed at which position. So basically there are four constraints we can add either top, start, end or bottom. Okay. So I will assign this top to parent top and start to parent start and end parent end. Okay, so similar way, I will create three more text. Now I will call it second view. This will be third view, and this will be fourth view. Okay, now I will just change the reference. It will be two, this will be three, and this will be four. Okay. Now the top of this particular element will be below of this particular ID. So I will say here link to test one reference dot bottom. So this particular element's top will be aligned to bottom of this particular text. Okay. So similar way we will change a reference for this one. And this will be text to reference, and here it will be. Okay, now you can see these particular elements are displayed in the order 
whatever we defined we have defined this particular text will be top to parent stop start to parent start and end to parent end so if you see the first element it will be top parent start and parent end and similar way this also have parent start and parent end and its top is aligned to bottom of this particular view so this way we can create a constraint layout so this particular approach is called inline approach in the inline approach what will happen we declare a reference id and use this reference id to the modifier which is scoped within this particular layout so now there is one more approach where we need to set a constraint outside of this layout so we will see how we can use it so in that scenario we need to provide constraint set as a parameter of this function okay. so we will say here get constraint set okay. this function will give constraint set okay. now once we use constraint set then we will not able to use create reference so we need to remove create reference from here so now same thing we will do here we will create a for reference let's say well text one reference and here we are passing the id okay this is the id similar way two three four okay now what do you want to do now we need to uh, set a constraint so here we will use constraint and we want constraint for first id let's say text one reference okay. so if you see here i am receiving this suggestion because i have turned on gemini so gemini is basically ai tool provided by google and it's integrated in android studio so it will be give suggestion based on your typing so if you see here it is saying align top start and end to these suggestions okay whenever you want to apply those suggestions just press tab so this constraint will be applied so similar way i will apply for text 2 text 3 and text 4 okay now we can apply these constraint to particular elements so instead of constraint s we need to use layout id okay and here we have given a layout id to text 1 this will be text 2 this will be 3 and this will be 4 and if i go here it will be text 1 now whenever i use layout id then we don't need to provide a function because we already added a constraint to this particular function okay so we can remove these constraints similar way from here as well now we will see what are the advantage we get when we follow this approach so this is helpful whenever the configuration is getting changed at the runtime let's say at the runtime you are changing the constraint set or you want to update the margin based on the device orientation so if you see here so whenever user in the portrait mode we need to give a margin start of system dp and margin end of system dp so whenever user rotate the device and it go to the landscape mode we want to update it with 32 dp so we will see how we can implement this part so what i will do i will just pass a margin here okay if its orientation is landscape mode then we want to give a margin of 32 dp otherwise we want to give a margin of 16 dp so now we will pass this value to this function argument now we will change to this one now here we will add this margin and we will update the constraint also we will align this start to this particular text one reference we will say now in the portrait mode you can see we have a spacing of 16 dp now what we will do we will create one more preview block for landscape mode so default will be portrait so we will create here landscape and go to this setting and here we will change orientation from portrait to landscape mode 
Okay, now if you see here in the portrait mode, we have this much 16 dpo spacing, but here we can see 32 dpo spacing. So now next we will see how we can use guideline. So guideline are basically of two types. One is called horizontal guideline and second is called vertical guideline. Basically horizontal means start and end while vertical means top and bottom. Okay. So what we will do here, we will create a guideline here. Well, guideline start is equal to create guideline from start. Uh, in the guideline, we can pass a value in DP or we can pass a value in percentage. So basically, percentage means a fraction value. So we can give 0 0.1 to 0 0.99 or 1. Okay, now let's say we give a 10%. So we will say 0 0.1F. Similar way, I can create guideline and so now I will assign this guideline start to and this end to guideline end. So instead of from start, it will be from end. Okay. So this way we can use guideline start. So similar way, let's say instead of percentage, you want to give guideline in DP. So we will just say 8 DP and similar way here as well. 8 DP. And for demo part, we will just create a fraction for this one 0 0.1 F. Okay, so similar way we can create a vertical guideline. Now, next thing is how we can use barrier. So basically barriers defined, we are adding a restriction or a constraint to that particular view. Let's say there is a use case. What we will do, uh, we will align this element to a horizontal view and we need to keep this particular view to below of the text which have a maximum height. Okay. Now, how we can do that part? So, what we will do, we will first arrange this element into a horizontal. Okay. So, this is correct constraint, and this is also correct. And we will remove an end constraint from here. What we will do now, its top will be parent top, and start will be text one difference end. And here we will remove the end constraint. Similar way, it will be parent top and start will be text to this one, and the last one will be text three bottom start to this one is correct. We can remove this end constraint here, it should be text to end. Now, if you notice here, we have assigned this text four to below of text three. Okay. Now let's see how barrier will be helpful. Now what we will do, we will increase the text of this particular view. Text. Okay. Now if you see here, the fourth text overlap inside of first view. Okay. So how we can overcome the situation? So we will create a barrier here. Again, barrier can be of four type. Barrier will be top, start, end, and bottom. Okay. So I will create a barrier bottom here. Similar way we will have start, end, and top. So here we will assign three reference text one, text two, comma, text three. Okay. And we will assign this barrier to fourth view. Okay. Now you can see this fourth view is correctly visible. Now we, what we will do, we will remove it from first one and add it to second layout. Now again, you can notice this is correctly placed similar way for this one. So this way we will set a barrier to avoid any overlap kind of situation. Okay. Now last part is how we can use chain. So basically chain can be of two type. Either it will be a horizontal chain and it can be a vertical chain. So again, chain is applied between multiple views. So basically here it will be multiple reference. So what we will say? Well, horizontal chain is equal to create horizontal chain. And here we need to pass a reference ID. 
so let's say we'll call text one two three will be in a chain now next we will define a chain style so basically we have three type of chain style either packed spread or spread inside so we will just see how we can use a chain style of packed so here what we need to do we need to add a chain style here we will say horizontal chain and now uh, top will not work because we are assigning a horizontal chain okay it will only have start and end now even we can comment this code if you notice here we have set a horizontal chain so we don't need to set start end and this element are properly arranged okay similar way maybe we can use end dot link to guideline end okay now let's say we change from horizontal chain to vertical chain so we will say create vertical chain and in the vertical chain this will not work so now if you see here this first view second view third view are vertically arranged so this way we will apply a chain style so that much for this video hope you like it so in the next video we will see how we can use side effect side effect is one of the important topic of compose so stay tuned for further updates